Hey guys, so this video is, well you saw the title and the album art, or the video artwork, whatever. Baby J has transferred to another home and I wanted to share why, but also prep you guys because tomorrow I'll be putting out another video which it'll all make sense in a little bit. So, where do I start? Baby J came, obviously you guys have saw the video, thank you for watching, and I got him when he was four days old from the hospital. He left when he was six days old. During that time, I found out that baby J, well, okay, so I was not feeling good. Literally the day that I picked him up, that night I started feeling really sick. And I was like, oh my gosh, do I have COVID? What's going on? I picked him up on a Wednesday. I went and tested on a Friday. I didn't get my test results back until a week later. During that week with baby S and baby J, I was a mess. I mean like a mess. And I was like, this has got to be COVID, but I hadn't gotten my test results. And I was just like, what's going on here? Now keep in mind, I am fully vaccinated. I have my booster shot. Like, I didn't know what was going on. Well. Baby R is like freaking out that week for some reason. He's he's a more difficult baby sometimes. Like he needs to be really soothed and coddled and held all the time and I'm I'm here for it, trust me. I love it. <laughs> but it can get to be a lot too, right? Well, that week it was like times a hundred with him. Plus I'm not feeling good. Plus there's a new baby here, and like a brand new fresh baby here. And I didn't know what was going on. On a Wednesday night, I was like, I looked at baby, uh, baby J and I said, I'm holding baby S cause he's freaking out. And I said, buddy, I'm so sorry. I cannot hold you as much as I would like to. Now, he was getting held, don't get me wrong. Like he was getting loved, he was getting held. But my level of care and love that I like to give these children, which is oftentimes above and beyond, I wasn't able to give him. Because if I was giving baby S, who needs a lot of attention, love and affection and soothing, I wasn't really able to give baby, all the babies, <laughs> baby J, the same love and affection and vice versa. And I wasn't feeling good. So the next day I text a social worker, I said, hey, unfortunately we have to find baby J a new home. Because, and I explained why. They're like, okay, because they don't want us having children in our homes. That's not a right fit. So he transfers, it's, a, it's great, it's easy. he's in a great home. Finally, the next day on Friday, I found out that I, a week later, I got my test back from my COVID PCR test. I was positive for COVID. And I was like, oh my gosh, Kevin, no wonder you were like feeling more like beat down, more like baby S is extreme, more vulnerable, more overwhelmed because you had COVID, like, of course. And so I'm sharing this with my social worker, like, this week. And I was like, well, like, of course, like, I, of course it was just too much. And I said, look, I've had two children before. It's, I know I can do this. And, and they at the agency said, Kevin, we know you can do it. We would have never placed a second child with you if we didn't think you could do it. We know you and we know you can do this. And I was like, 
I know, and it's just, I just didn't realize that I had COVID. I didn't realize I was like, it was hard as, you know, I'm literally like, one night I was like dying, but I have these two children I have to take care of because I'm single. So after like talking that through, talking to them, I decided, I know I can do this. I didn't decide, I knew I could do this. So I said, hey, please put me back on the list for a placement because I'm allowed to have two children up to the age of two in my home. And they said, okay, well, we will. And I said, look, this time, like, don't worry. I'm not gonna like turn, turn around on this. Like, I, I'm really sure about what I'm doing. And baby J left, it was just me and baby S. And then uh, just today, baby S and I are walking home from Starbucks and I'm literally walking down the street right by my place and I get this phone call and it says DCF work DCFS worker because I have them saved like that and I was like oh my gosh I know what this call is and she the woman answered I answered the woman says hi and she says hi Kevin we have this baby this is his race this is his age uh, he is five months old this is why he was detained can you take him right now? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I can. Cause you know, I just had this conversation with my agency, like I can do this. So literally before I knew it today, within, I would say the max three hours, this baby boy was brought to my home. And so that's what I wanted to share with you guys, because I know everyone was like so excited about baby J and baby S and one thing that's like really, really important and I get a lot of this feedback is like, thank you for being honest and vulnerable through your channel and talking about what foster care is really like. And I'll be very honest, guys. I don't talk about their stories. Like there is so much information about their cases and like what these kids have gone through, what I go through throughout these cases and the ups and downs. Y'all don't even see, you literally don't even see 80% of it. I show you what my journey through parenting is. And I really enjoy that. It's just a unique version because I'm fostering to adopt, right? And, but that's why I wanted to share this because this is the reality. Sometimes kids are here for a couple days and they might go back to home. They might go back to, they might go to another foster home. They might go to siblings foster placements. This is the reality. and. I feel really good about my decision because as much as I would have loved to have baby J here, it taught me something. It taught me that like not every child is meant for me to adopt. It's just that simple. I really think that my purpose for, for him was to get him out of that hospital because he had been sitting in the hospital for a couple of days. I think I was supposed to get him out of the hospital and love him for the couple of days that I had it. <clears throat> and I did. And now baby T is here and I'm excited. He's a great baby. Um, he is five months old. He is a little less than a month younger than baby S. Tomorrow I'll put out the video about baby T's arrival and you guys will get to see that. Uh, yeah, you know, like, it's funny to see, like, one will start crying and the other one will look at him and it'll be like, okay, I guess we're crying now. And he'll start crying. Ooh, bedtime was tough, but um, it's okay. So that's everything. It's, you know, pretty quick video today. Uh, but I did want to let you guys know about baby, baby J. And... I guess the takeaway is, like what I said, not every baby is meant to be here long-term or forever. Sometimes they're here for short, short period of time. And you have to know that at least you gave them love, bonding, attention, affection, food, clothes, touch. I really want to adopt and I hope I get there soon. But this is this is a journey that I've never I've never been on, and I can't compare myself to anyone. I can't you know judge myself against anyone that's done this and adopted or anything. Cause that's easier to do too. 
am I right for this? And is God trying to tell me like, I shouldn't be doing this? But this is my journey, right? This is my journey and I would love to have two forever kids in my, that are in my home right now. But we'll see, we'll see how the tides shift and turn and all that jazz. So thanks for watching. That's what happened with baby J. Still got baby S here. Now we got baby T tomorrow. I'll have baby T's arrival and I hope we're doing lifelong videos for both of them. Yeah. All right, guys. Woo. What a ride. My place is a mess. If you can see that behind me, you'll find out why tomorrow. Okay. Bye guys.